99 times out of 100, people don't criticize themselves for anything, no matter how wrong it may be. Criticism is useless because it puts a person on the defensive and usually makes him to strive to justify himself. Criticism is dangerous because it wounds a person's precious pride, hurts his sense of importance, and arouses resentment. B.F. Skinner, the world famous psychologist, proved through his experiments that an animal rewarded for good behavior will learn much more rapidly and effectively than an animal punished for bad behavior. Later studies have shown that same applies to humans. By criticizing, we do not make lasting changes and often produce resentment. The resentment that criticism generates can demoralize employees, family members and friends and still not correct the situation that has been condemned. Josh B. Johnston of Enid, Oklahoma was the safety coordinator for an engineering company. One of his responsibilities was to see that the employees wear their hats whenever they are on the job in the field. At first, whenever he came across workers who were not wearing hard hats, he would tell them with a lot of authority of the regulation. As a result, he would get sullen acceptance, and often after he left, the workers would remove hat. Then Josh decided to try a different approach. The next time he found some of the workers not wearing their hard hats, he asked if the hats were uncomfortable or did not fit properly. Then he reminded the men in a pleasant tone of voice that the hat was designed to protect them from injury and suggested that it always be worn on the job. The result was increased compliance with the regulation with no resentment or emotional upset. Next time when you and I are tempted to criticize someone tomorrow, let's remember that criticisms are like homing pigeons. They always return home. Let's realize that the person we are going to correct or condemn will probably justify himself or herself and condemn us in return. Do you know someone you would like to change and regulate and improve? Good, that is fine. I am all in favor of it. But why not begin on yourself? From a purely selfish standpoint, that is a lot more profitable than trying to improve others. Yes, and a lot less dangerous. Remember what Confucius once said. Don't complain about the snow on your neighbor's roof when your own door step is unclean. If you and I want to stir up a resentment tomorrow that may wrinkle across the decades and endure until death, just let us indulge in the little stinging criticism, no matter how certain we are that it is justified. When dealing with people, let us remember we are not dealing with creatures of logic. We are dealing with creatures of emotions, creatures bristling with prejudices and motivated by pride and vanity. Bitter criticism caused the sensitive Thomas Hardy, one of the finest novelists to enrich English literature, to give up forever the writing of fiction. Criticism drove Thomas Jefferson, the English poet, to suicide. Benjamin Franklin, tactless in his youth, became so diplomatic, so adroit at handling people, that he was made American ambassador to France. The secret of his success? I will speak ill of no man, he said and I speak all the good I know of everybody. Any fool can criticize, condemn and complain, and most fools too, but it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Instead of condemning people, let's try to understand them. As Dr. Johnson said, God himself saw, does not propose to judge men until the end of his days. Why should you and I? Principle 1. Don't criticize, condemn or complain.